Walker here and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy where I've got a special guest with me, James Klusky. Now James Klusky here, he's a resident pro at, well one of the two professionals here at Necker Island. And I'm going to pass you over to James to tell you about his professional story and more importantly we're going to bring into this session how tennis or any professional sport and business really go hand in hand. So James, talk to us about your professional career as a tennis player. First of all, thanks for having me, Peter. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, so to take you back a little bit, so I'm from Ireland, from Dublin, Ireland. Um, was a good junior there, played on the international stage in juniors, was pretty good. Then ended up going to getting a scholarship to go to Louisiana State University, so I played college tennis there. Great four years in America, great learning. Um, I was ranked number three in the country in doubles. And then I, at, when I finished college in 2009, I decided to go professionally. Played from 2009 till the end of 2015 slash 2016, um, and I got to a career high ranking of 145. Um, wow. So I played played um, ATP events, played Davis Cup for Ireland for nine, ten years, um, and so now to bring you up to speed here. So I retired. Got a, I, I came to Richard has um, the world's most exclusive pro am here called the Necker Cup, um, which I attended, and then I ended up meeting. Josh, who's the coach, is here usually, um, and then I was asked to come back and coach Richard a little bit. So uh, I'm here. Yeah, I spent a month with him last year, playing tennis with him twice a day. Great learning for me as well, um, to see the way he is on a daily basis. And then I'm back for another month to work with him as well. So, as a professional athlete, what was your discipline like? What was your routines like to play at that kind of level? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think it's um, you know a lot of business people talk about passion, and I think I think for your professional athletes they have a lot of passion for their sports. You grow up loving the sport, um, and you love to play, you love to compete. I think it it teaches you that competitive, you know, uh, that that battle that you you get from competing against someone. It also teaches you, you know, how to deal with defeat, how to deal with setbacks. You know, if you, if you look at tennis, you play 30 tournaments. Not everyone is, you know, 30 tournaments a year, and not everyone is Roger Federer or Novak Djokovic. There's only one winner every week, so you know you're 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 losing a lot of matches. So it's you know dealing with defeat and coming back the next week, always trying to take the positives from your performance and taking one or two things to, to improve on as well. And um, so I think it teaches you a lot for for life. And how much do you think of your week did you used to spend practicing and honing your skills? Yeah, I mean it was it's it's um, six days a week. We usually give one day off. I often think it's pretty funny when I, I would. I remember I met a friend who was a decent tennis player, and he said to me, he said, uh, I, you know, I would have been as good as you if I practiced as hard. And I said, well, you didn't, you know. So when I was a junior, we used to play four days before school. Then after school as well in the evenings. Um, so you, you, I mean, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no shortcuts. You know, you have to put in the hard yards. And that's really important. The whole thing about there being no shortcuts. And probably one of my favourite authors out there is a guy called Matthew Side. Yeah. And he wrote a book called Bounce. Yeah. And he very much talks about the fact that to be good at anything, you have to have at least 10,000 hours of purposeful practice, mm. which you've done in abundance. Mm. But my question to business owners is how often do you spend time purposefully practicing your craft so that you become amazing business owners? Because unless you take that time out and practice, the chances are your, your game is never going to improve. Mm. And I mean, you've worked with Richard. How disciplined is Richard? Yeah, Richard's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, going back, he would have been, I would have read his books. And when I got the opportunity to come here, it was just incredible. But Last year he was he was preparing for uh, the Virgin Strive race as well, so that was a endurance race across the mountains. And and not knowing many you know famous business people, I would have thought I would you know maybe it's one of those things where the business guys or the face shows up to cut a ribbon or you know makes it look like he's doing something. I mean his training was just incredible. He was he was. Um, we were playing tennis every day, usually twice a day. Then every two to three days, you would be over on a cycle up the mountains, Virgin Gorda, which is, you know, 
incredibly uh, incredibly difficult and I said to him uh, I said to him one day last year I said um, you're just relentless and that was and he said yeah and once he's in something he's all in if he commits to if he says he's going to do that charity thing he his heart and soul into it and it was it was a great learning I think it's I think it's a similar kind of trait with sports people but um, I mean even yesterday if you look we played tennis in the morning which you were here for then he went kite surfing in the afternoon and then he played tennis again in the evening so he's big on he feels that if he's physically fit and he's physically active he can be more you know um, he works better as well and that's a really important point and my question to everyone watching today's so episode is what are your exercise routines like because I've witnessed it firsthand I've been down here at 5 30 every single morning Richard will normally rock up at six o'clock and that's how he starts his day he starts his day the way he means to go on mm. and I think that's a really there's a lot to be said about routine and discipline yeah no I think it's uh, that was one of the biggest learnings for me from him last year was just just that discipline with getting out and, and being physically active and and just the fun factor as well, which I'm sure you picked up on. It's not like, you know, it's not dead serious. It's mm. kind of come in, you know, have a cup of tea. How's your How is your evening? There's a little bit of chat. You know, you might chat about current affairs or whatever it is. And the tennis is always very relaxed, but it is. The thing I noticed about Richard with with tennis as well is that he asks a lot of he asks a lot of good questions. So if I give him a tip on a forehand or a serve. He takes it on board, but he'll also he won't just take it. He'll ask you a little bit more about it, and he's really interested in learning. Um, and actually, la when I arrived last year, I was obviously um, you know I, I didn't know him very well at all. And he was driving the the buggy, and uh, I said to him, "Look, I'm I'm here for a month. I'm going to be taking over from Josh." And he said, "Oh, great to meet you. I'm I'm really looking forward to learning from you," which was I thought was a really interesting thing to say. Um, and you can tell that from his personality that he always wants to learn. And that's really important. So, I mean, one of the traits of a top business person is actually one's ability to actually have an open mind, one's ability to actually learn. Really key. Now, obviously, as a tennis player, your career has come to an end now. Yes. How have you filled that void? Yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough. Um, I've, I've, I've tried to surround myself with good people. Mm -hmm. So when I was during my career, I would say that I'm from a small country that's not really a tennis nation. So what I did during my career was I tried to go and train with the best players. So I went to India to do a training camp with the best guys. I wow. tried to get around good people. So now that I'm, you know, embarking on business and trying to find my passion and all that, you know, I've 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 stuck to the same philosophy and actually. When I was at the Necker Cup, I, I, one guy gave me advice. Um, I asked his advice if he, could, if he could say one thing, and he said, "Surround yourself. Use your tennis to get in with the best business people." So I've tried to, you know, meet great business people, which obviously I'm here, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay with that. I'm trying to learn from them and pick up the traits from them. So filling the void has been tough. Now I'm trying to find my next to put my passion into something else, um, and I think I found that with with. Uh, I've started a company, it's called Mason Alexander Sports, so it's helping uh, athletes, former professional athletes, with their career transition with things like CV building, interview prep, and then liaising with companies to find them jobs. So very interesting, last week there was a company on the island called Stryker, um, it's a global medical company, and um, the president was telling me that over 50% of, of their workforce, their salespeople in the States are former athletes, so former college athletes. And to me, this is really exciting, especially for business owners out there looking, because business owners need top talent. Mm. And I hear very often people complain about the talent pool and how people are not really so great and you can't get the staff you need. Mm. But really, when you start looking at people like athletes, let's face it, they are brilliant people yeah. to hire into your business. Because imagine the discipline and the focus that they've had for so many years. Yeah. If you can then train them into a totally different field, exactly. How beneficial can that be for businesses? Yeah, I think I think athletes adapt. You know, we 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 have passion for something and we want to do something to make it happen. And I think it's again, it's it's 
you know, there's the other side of sports where I, I think it's the dealing with dealing with defeat and dealing with tough times, which you know business people go through and people go through in general. I think athletes are it's a great learning. Um, so I think it's a really powerful thing. So I mean, the one thing I'd say to all the people sort of on today's episode is definitely watch out for sort of James's business because okay. I think there's going to be some exciting people coming through this agency that will be in a great position to serve you. But listen, James. Thank you for your time today. No problem. If you resonate with what we've spoken about today and today's episode, please head over to orca.com and get in contact. And remember, failing to learn is learning to fail. <laughs>